going to teach, you'll be a success. If you don't, you're going to hurt people, and your job is short-lived. And as the examiner, you're the one who can either pass or fail them. Well, yeah, they have to score. How that system worked was you have to score a three until proven guilty. So everybody passes. Everybody's either a, a one, a two, or a three. A three is a passing grade. A two is, hmm... She did something wrong, but not enough to fail her. So then they would have another category. All right, what did you? What did she do for you to give her that two? And you would grade them on that. Um, or one. One is an instant failure. And that would be some stuff that you, you know, double leg lifts off the floor like a Superman, arms and legs, that's a failure. Throwing the head back, that's a failure. Again, forward spinal flexion without any support is a failure. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things that they, you know, you tell them during the day, make sure you don't do this for the test. And sometimes it kind of like goes in one ear and out the other. But it's okay, you know. Um, I'm just there to make sure that people, when they go out in the teaching world, that they're doing everything safe. It's about safety first, you know. Uh, the people out there are getting advice from their doctors. You know, I have a lot of active seniors, and most of the gyms are loaded in the mornings with active seniors. You know, you really don't have the young ones working out in the nighttime like it used to be back in the 80s when we first started this fitness craze. Most of the time, every, you know, morning women are the ones that are working out, and uh, they're, everybody is at least 45 to 50 years old and above. Got to know your audience. Yes. What can you tell me about Fuse Craze? Ah, Fuse Craze. That was a fun time. All right. Well, Fuse Craze is about teaching other instructors how to put together an aerobic program in some kind of dance where they could put together a routine in Bollywood or Latin or um, jazz or hip hop. Um, you know, there's so many different styles of dance. So I would go, you know, equipped with these cards that AFA gives you so they can pick their own stuff because they're going to eventually create their own choreography. And uh, we put them in groups and, you know, the role in charge of doing a count of eight and coming up with either African or Bollywood, like I said, or a jazz routine, something. And um, I would have to make sure that I had the right music to go f- with what they wanted to do as well. So I came prepared with music and all kinds of stuff. And then after, you know, they would take the workshop. There's no test involved. It's just a workshop. They they earn five continuing ed credits for taking that. And then after, they used to take the whole class. Again, it's a it's from nine o'clock in the morning till about five at night and at the last hour of the workshop I would introduce them to my jazz aerobics and I would put together my own program so they can see how you can incorporate all kinds of styles in different um routines and when you create your choreography. And they loved it. Um I've been teaching that class since 1987. It has never failed me. I enjoy teaching it. I enjoy creating the steps for it. And, you know, it's my baby. And at the end of the Fuse Craze workshop, did they come up with a routine that they presented to everybody? Yes. Each group, either they would draw the card of jazz or they would draw the card of uh, uh, Middle Eastern uh, or they would draw the card of uh, Latin. Depends on what card. And then, yes, all the groups that were all, you know, in groups, they would uh, create their own stuff and then show everybody what they came up with. How did you get involved with the Silver Sneaker Program? Oh, the Silver Sneaker Program is an awesome program. Um, yes, I also independently contract with Tivity Health and they put together um, the Silver Sneaker Program, which are, is out there to most uh, gyms that the insurance companies put together. Or, you know, it's a free membership. So, you know, a lot of different health plans. So a lot of seniors should look into that to see if they can get a free membership at a gym and start taking the Silver Sneaker classes. Those are for the, sil- you know, for the seniors. Uh, we do that with chairs. It It is an awesome program. And uh, I teach... I teach a few of those at Anytime Fitness over in Spring Hill, and I 
hopefully we'll do two more over in Ridge Manor when that gym opens up. So, um, and what it is, it's done with chairs and the seniors, you know, come in because, you know, 15% of percent of seniors die of a broken heart or of loneliness and uh, to get them out there and get them involved and hanging out with other seniors and exercising, moving, having fun. Um, so I love the program. It's awesome. And it's done with chairs, uh, a rubber ball, um, weights and resistant bands. And you take them through, they have to cover a lot of different areas, uh, as far as working out, you know, the power, uh, agility, speed, coordination, uh, all kinds of stuff. They have to reaction time, you know, things that they would do in everyday life, getting in and out of their car, reaching for a glass out of the cabinet, going underneath to get something underneath the sink or getting toilet paper from the bathroom. You never know what they have to do. So, you know, it's it's to make them stronger for down the road um, so they can live a productive life. So these exercises are also... Just simple things of like grabbing a cup or something like yeah. that. It's just, and you gear the exercises in a way that has to incorporate those muscle groups. Yes. Yeah. You're working all kinds of muscle groups. Um, you know, I have them doing squats. And when you get in and out of your car, you're actually doing a squat. So, you know, you teach them how to use their hands. Don't get in with one leg anymore. When you get in your car, make sure you turn around, put your butt down, open the door, get one leg in, get the other leg in, and then do the same thing when you come out. You know, don't just concentrate on one leg when you get out of the car or one leg when you get in the car. You got to use both. Anything else people should know about silver sneakers? Uh, Like I said, they have all kinds of silver sneaker classes. You could take a silver sneaker class in the water. A lot of the YMCA's, because they have the pool, they will have water classes. Um, I teach the classic. I also do cardio fit, which is more for the active seniors that don't need chairs. Um, But when they do my chair uh, classes, I really try not to baby them. I try not to let them sit too much. I rather them up. This way they can establish balance. And, uh, you know, just walking in front of them one step at a time. So it's a, it's a great program, and I simply adore it. Well, you also have a good singing voice, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you found the world of karaoke to channel some of that didn't you yes i did i fell in love with karaoke and i won an old and i won an oldies cruise so uh brian and i went on this cruise and they had karaoke on the ship and i said you know what i'm gonna try this i don't know anybody on this boat they don't know me i'm gonna sing and i'm just gonna have fun and that was it for me i was smitten with karaoke and it led to an introduction to some guy. Yes, to you, of course. Mm. Where <laughs> was that? That was at MacArthur Park Lounge. Mm. And uh, that's where we used to hang out. Was that Bohemia? Yes, that was in Bohemia, right on, right on Vets Highway. And that was the place to be. We were there for a long time. Yes, we were. That was a great place. And then we used to go over to Pete's place, mm. and wherever Bobby and Vanessa were playing, that's where you know we would go. And it was good. It was all good. Loved singing. Loved it. And now you sing at church. Yes, I do. I've been singing on the praise team for about, what, three years now? I think it's more than that. More than Maybe that? Four. Yeah, yeah I'm be. singing with the praise team. Love my guys, my little babies. I feel like their mom. <laughs> which is nice, and uh, I love them all. And uh, very talented, talented children we have at Hillside Baptist Church. It's awesome. And what's it like singing Christian music? I love Christian music. I have been listening to the Joy FM for about how many years? About the same amount of time you've been singing. Yes, and I am in love. I haven't had a regular radio station on my car radio in that many years. Uh, the only reason why I will listen to other music is when I put my jazz or uh, music together. You know, I make sure I pick artists from 
the 80s, the 70s, the 60s. So I have a mixture of a lot of stuff. But And Christian music. And I have some Christian. I've been introducing Christian music to my class, which, you know, we can still dance, dance, dance to Christian music because it's an awesome, awesome. I love it. And you also incorporated um, a little bit of uh, your singing in the dinner show. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, yeah. did a little acting. You filled in for a role. I, yeah, I filled in for Goldie Goldberg uh, in the Godfather Meshuggah Wedding, uh, directed by you heard her in the other podcast, Miss Deborah Ortiz. Ortiz, yeah. love that woman. And I did some choreography for her when we did other plays, which yeah. I loved. What was the genesis of that? I think we were doing Zeus's big surprise. Yes. And you saw a video of rehearsal, and they were trying to do choreography, but you felt... I felt that maybe these guys need my help here, and I was so delighted to help them. And I hope one day, Miss Debbie, that if you ever need me, please feel free. I would do it for you for nothing. That's how much I love you. So... um if you ever need my help, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or Alex on that. You crafted great routines for Zeus. Then we did our Halloween show. Yes. And we were doing some great, great choreography for us. Yes, we were. We did uh, Thriller, which was very, very cool. And uh, that's another video. I did the thriller routine. I made everybody dress as zombies in my class for Halloween. So if you ever want to see the thriller routine, feel free to go again to my jazz aerobic page where my videos are, and you can see that right there. And especially with the thriller video for the thriller choreography for our uh, Halloween show, there was, I mean, I think there was at least a dozen of us. So you had to choreograph that many people was it challenging to do yes because yeah well like i said when you have a lot of people you want to make sure that you have your 32 count in your music so you want to split them up to have at least four sets of eight in your count of 32 so you have to split them up and some people do the steps some have to wait to the next line the next line the next line so um you know it becomes challenging um so, uh, I mean, we had fun while we did it. Well, what was it like for you when you finally saw us? Oh, when I do- saw the production, I was like, I stood up on the chair, right? And I, they were like facing me. I was in the back of the room. I'll never forget that. I go, keep your eyes on me. Mm. And I was like trying to lead them as they were doing it, just in case somebody forgot something. But they did awesome. And I was so proud, so proud of them. Well, it seems safe to say that this dancing gene has found its way to the next generation. (laughs) Yes, my little baby. Who is this? My little Lucy girl. She's my granddaughter. She's seven years old. Love her, love her, love her. Um, You, my dear, created that Havana dance video with Lucy that was Amazing, and if you've not seen that, folks out there, you need to find it. It is awesome. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she's very sports minded. I'm not too sure about. She likes to dance, but I think she's more of a sports girl than. But she did that routine. That oh yeah, mentioned. oh yeah. She does my classes. She does my classes better than my mm-hmm. my students do. So uh, I I already warned them. My granddaughter's coming. Come and don't let her show you guys up. You went to New York to see her in her dance routine. Yes, right? she was in dance. She was in dance, and um, and she likes to dance. But I think she looks looks for more challenging stuff, like something that's mm-hmm. going to knock her around, like her karate. Mm-hmm. And uh, she'd be even excellent in soccer. This child, mm-hmm. but again, she's uh, she's mm-hmm. she's got the gift. Yes, it's evident in Havana, Winona. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you think we all have a little artist inside of us? Everybody knows how to dance. It's just that people don't can't feel the beat. It's about feeling the beat. You have to listen to the music. You can't, you know, it's good to sing with the song. It's all fine and good. But if you want to find that dance beat, you got to listen to the other instruments. And that's where you get it from. 
But everybody can dance. Everybody could tap their toe. It's just a matter of tapping your toe in time with the music. And that's what it's all about, in time with the music. So-